Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. We're glad you're here. We had a diplomatic incident last month and a lot of Americans didn't even know what happened. The government of France did something they haven't done in hundreds of years. They recalled their ambassador to the United States. They also accused the United States of behaving in a manner that is, quote, unacceptable between allies and partners. No, it wasn't a cheese embargo that made the French mad. They were angry that the Biden administration agreed to provide nuclear power submarines to Australia. France had wanted to sell its own submarines, and the Biden administration effectively killed that deal. It hurt France, and they were mad about it. Now, we haven't had a problem with France this profound since, to be specific, 1798. John Adams was president then, and the interesting thing is he had no idea that we had a problem with France. It took months for words to reach him back in Washington that American and French diplomats were fighting with one another. By the time Adams learned about this diplomatic dispute, which became known as the XYZ affair, it was too late to stop it. A naval war, mostly fought in the Caribbean, broke out between the United States and France. So the lesson from that conflict was pretty simple. If you're going to run the United States, you have to be pretty aware of what the rest of the world is doing, particularly major world powers, particularly your allies. So with that in mind, John Kerry, the former Secretary of State, now our climate czar, was asked what happened here. And his response was really simple. Like John Adams, Joe Biden had no idea that the French were upset. Now, unlike John Adams, our current president has the benefit of cell phones and the Internet. But he still didn't know. Joe Biden didn't know because he's in mental decline. There are a lot of things he doesn't know, including when our allies are furious with us and start withdrawing their ambassadors. So Kerry was asked to explain all this by a French news channel. Why did the Biden administration cut France out of a nuclear submarine deal with Australia? And his response was amazing. He said Joe Biden did this because Joe Biden was completely unaware there was a problem in the first place. Watch this. And uh, President Biden asked me about it, and I told him and expressed. Uh, you told Joe Biden that it was not the right. He asked me. He said, what's the situation? And I explained exactly. Uh, he, was, he had not been aware of that. He literally, literally had not been aware of what had transpired. When was the last time you heard someone from the U.S. government admit that the president was completely clueless? Quote, he literally had not been aware of what had transpired. Now, you're probably not shocked by that. Joe Biden was visibly confused throughout the entire presidential campaign. Here's one example. Good evening, Tampa. Thanks so much for tuning in. No man has a right to raise a hand to a woman in anger other than in self-defense, and that rarely ever occurs. And so we have to just change the culture, period, and keep punching at it and punching at it and punching at it. Play the radio. Make sure the television, the, excuse me, make sure you have the record player on at night. Poor kids are just as bright and just as talented as white kids. We choose science over fiction. We choose truth over fact. Now, we're not trying to be mean. As we've said many times, we feel sorry for Joe Biden. All of us hope to live to the age where we face those kinds of problems. And the truth is, voters knew what they were getting when they voted for Joe Biden. What's interesting is that now that he's in office, Biden's handlers are doing everything they can to prevent us from noticing that he's not really in charge. Take a look at the latest example. These are pictures of a fake White House set that the Biden administration has for some reason constructed across the street from the actual White House. It's in an auditorium at the Eisenhower Executive Office Building. Why go to the trouble? They already have a White House. Well, Stephen Miller spent the last four years in the White House as an advisor to Trump, and here's his explanation for it, because he would know. Quote, the reason Biden uses this bizarre virtual set for televised meetings and not an actual room like the East Room, the Cabinet, the Oval, the Roosevelt Sit Room, etc. There are a lot of rooms. The reason he does this is because it allows him to read a script directly from a face-on monitor and without teleprompter glass that can be seen on camera. Oh. Now, we can't verify that that's true, but it certainly sounds right. Joe Biden can't speak from the Oval Office because he's not sure what to say, so he has to read it all here. So that raises a much deeper question. The question is not, is Joe Biden mentally impaired? Obviously, he is. And again, we're not going to gloat over it. But a much more important question for the rest of us is, if he's not running the government, then who is? That's a real question. Clearly, the FBI, the DOJ, and the military are already acting independently of the elected president of the United States. As you just saw, they don't even keep him informed of international incidents. Instead, they are, in some cases, freelancing 
to crush anyone who opposes their power. Mike Flynn, for example, he was briefly the national security advisor in the Trump administration. What we learned from the destruction of Mike Flynn, really, was that, sure, you can elect Donald Trump president, but does he really run the executive branch of government? No, it turned out Barack Obama was still in charge, even though he was no longer president. So Obama had his cronies charge Mike Flynn with a crime, talking to Russia as the national security advisor, which, of course, is not a crime by any stretch, and they wrecked his life for doing that. It took years for us, this is how slow we are, to figure out exactly what had happened there, but now it's very obvious. We just sat down with a long interview with Mike Flynn. It's coming out Monday. And he told us what is really obvious to everyone who watches. An unelected group within Washington effectively runs the country without reference to voters. Here's his assessment. We have two separate governments. We have the one that actually gets elected and goes into office. And then you have a government inside of Washington, D.C. that operates under no rules, uh, no authorities other than their own or who's ever in charge of their Sounds own Sounds like that government was still controlled by Barack Obama. Yeah, and, and I would say that that's, that, uh, to a degree, is, is what we're operating with today. By the way, Mike Flynn is not some Internet celebrity or conservative activist. He was a three-star general. He was the head of an intelligence agency. He was the number two guy for all American intelligence. He spent his entire life working in the federal government and succeeding at that. So he knows what he's talking about. He is a reliable guide to how the government actually works. Our whole conversation with Mike Flynn, by the way, is on Tucker Carlson. Today. It's coming out Monday on Fox Nation. But it's not just Mike Flynn who's being destroyed. Every ideological opponent of the regime is under attack. Parents in school board meetings saying unapproved things. Yesterday, Joe Biden's flack refused to rule out using the Patriot Act to hunt down American parents who are upset about what their kids are learning. Watch this. Would the administration be okay with the FBI using the Patriot Act to surveil these parents if that is what they decide? I don't speak on behalf of the National School Board Association. I speak on behalf of this government. The attorney general has can put out a letter, they will take actions they take, and I would point to them for more information. Oh, so this is the spokesman for the President of the United States saying of the Justice Department, they're going to take actions that they're going to take. Like, we don't really have any control over this. And she may be on to something there. It does increasingly seem like the national security state runs everything. You remember the DOJ recently dispatched its anti-terrorism national security division to investigate ordinary parents calling them domestic terrorists. The DOJ is also developing training sessions to tell school board members that free speech is actually violence. <laughs> so who's really in charge? It's a really interesting question. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.